Hello everyone. Uh, I'd like to share on some uh, experiments I did with this thing called UWB, which stands for ultra wide band. Okay, so I uh, my my full time job is a IoT hardware engineer, and I've been uh, tinkering around with these things. So, so uh, why UWB? Uh, I was looking. Uh, my my school rob I was mentoring a school robotics club, and they were building this uh, platform. Uh, and I was thinking of a way that uh, you, you could track this uh, robot in the entire school so that the school, the robot could move around autonomously. So anyways, uh, to explain a little bit more about ultra wide band, ultra wide band is used in uh, tracking applications like indoor GPS. It's able to attract like 10 plus minus 10 to 30 cm accuracy and its uh, applications are include but not, I uh, don't know, uh, like asset tracking, a personal tracking, or robotics. <coughs> so I wish to explain what's a R RTLS because in tracking systems you will see this. So this is called real-time location systems. So they can include one or more technologies such like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, UWB, or GPS. GPS is also counted. So for ultra-wide band, uh, there are two most common methods, uh, two common methods that are used for RLTS. One is time of flight method, in which the anchors, which are, are ranging units, stationary ranging units, they are placed at uh, different spots. Then the tag, which is what you're tracking, will be ranging uh, each of the anchors one by one. So the other method is time of difference of time difference of arrival in which every single anchor is connected to a central server by uh, Ethernet cable and it needs to be time synced, it's very very sensitive so the tag will send out a ping which is detected by all the anchors and uh, this is how it, it ranges uh, you get a range of every single in between every, every single anchor and tag and you can uh, estimate the position of the tag yeah. So pros and cons of these two methods. The time of flight method uh, is low cost, it's easier to set up. However, the cons is that it's usually uh, limited to about 30 subjects because it has to range every single, uh, one round of every single anchor. The other method is time difference of arrival. Uh, Yes, much lower. It uses much lower battery life. Uh, it's able to track like thousand or more sub subjects. However, the cons is that it's very hard to set up. Uh, you need a lot more infrastructure to do so, and there's time synchronization needed, which is very sensitive. Uh, if one of the time uh, is not synced, the system can collapse. Okay, so. I found this uh, Wayne's tinkering page, which I referenced from. Um, basically, this this person he built uh, he used this module called U, U, uh, DWM thousand, and he mixed it up with a Pro Mini five volts. So he used a on on his website. Uh, the reason why he designed in shift level shifting triggers was because he had a few uh, five volt controllers around and it was powered through an FTDI so I, uh, I looked at this design and redesigned it to use 3.3 uh, volt Pro Mini so I can remove all the level shifting components and I had a micro USB port so I can use power banks to test and okay so actually I wanted to demo but I couldn't demo because the, my FTDI module was spoiled so unfortunately you cannot see the demo today <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have an office. I have it both. Yeah, everyone has it. So do I. I have three at home, but <laughs> none down here. So yeah. Me and Fuzzy. Fuzzy's not here today. Fuzzy is around. I'm sure he has someone, some stuff, stuff somewhere in hackerspace. Okay. Yeah. So, any questions? Need for infrastructure for uh, TDOA. Yes. 
Why, how is the infrastructure for that versus not So, okay, for, for time of flight, uh, the tag, how it works is the tag will range the anchor, then it will range the next anchor, then it will range the next anchor. Time synchronization doesn't matter. So let's say I say, oh, I'm 10 meters from here, some, from you, then I'm 5 meters from you, then maybe 3 meters from you. So in this space, I estimate that I'm in this position. However, for time difference of arrival, it just sends a ping. Everyone receives it at the same time. So maybe a, exactly a very accurate timing, maybe a, exactly a, at this time. Every single one, uh, I, I know that I send a ping. And then all of them uh, needs to know exactly when this tag has sent a the ping. Then you can calculate the difference. So, uh, so Yes, yes, it needs to have uh, synchronization. I, I looked at application sheet. Uh, I saw the need for synchronization signal. I'm not exactly sure how to do it, but it's, it seems quite complicated. Uh, and yeah, every single anchor needs to be time synced. So it's not just done with the, net the network you're using to connect? It will be done by a wired network, usually. Yeah. Oh, uh, TOF, you know, you're potentially Wi-Fi? Uh, TOF, you... So it's also using UWB. Uh, to communicate with your... So there are two ways of doing this. The, the, the anchors themselves, they can maybe have Wi-Fi modules that they can send to the server by UDP, or it can be calculated on the tag. So maybe a robot... You don't, you don't yeah. Wi-Fi at the time, so, okay. Yeah. Go on. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the DW1000 module, how many modules do you need for like, this cell of like five? One one receiver and four transmitters. Okay, so at minimum we want two 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 D ranging. Uh, you need okay. If you want one D ranging, you just need two. If you want to know your position in two D space, you just need three. If you want to know your position in three D space, you need four, at least four. So three and one tag. Okay, you know what frequency it works on? Uh, it's from three thousand to nine thousand. Yeah. 3, 3, giga, 3 gigahertz to 9 gigahertz, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for like, you know, RTLS, right? Hmm. Uh, a lot of um, other RTLS system, they may use the FOA, frequency of arrival, or yes. FDOA. So uh, just now you mentioned that UWB, right, can be around like in the CM range, which is really accurate. So, hmm. is it true that just by using like one of the methods like TDOA without like FOA or AOA, it can already achieve that, that accuracy? Yes. And like, um, uh, the main reason is it because of the frequency? Okay, it's, it's not, it doesn't do by frequency, it uses its time of light. Uh, it really calculates using the speed of light of the radio wave. Um, and it's in nanoseconds. So do, okay, yeah. do you compare like UWB with like maybe like other um, signal that is used for um, RTLS purposes? And what is the like maybe main advantage of UWB over like probably using other signals for RTLS? Uh, I think like let's say using Bluetooth is good for proximity. Um, or maybe let's say you want Wi-Fi that it can jump about. The 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 stability is. It's, it's pretty unstable using like other types like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, thread. Yeah. However, when I, I did experiment with UWB, it was extremely stable. Mm -hmm. It jumped about maybe plus minus one cm. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. In your development, mm. what kind of test and measurement instruments have they employed, or do you envision needing to use? Uh, I'm just exploring. <laughs> this, this is a hobby. Uh, however, what I did was I had a ruler, a one meter ruler, and I placed one de device, uh, the, the anchor and one tag, and I, sh I moved it like 10 cm. I saw the difference on the screen by 10 cm. So it was very good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks.